In this video, we're going to introduce an important idea, the idea of the gradient vector, but it comes from a natural outgrowth of what we've seen already with directional derivatives. If we talk about the derivative of a function at a point in a certain direction, we came up with this formula for that slope. Well, if you notice though, if we have u1 and u2 as multipliers for something else, and those made up a vector when we started, we had a vector that indicated the direction of travel. Well, that could be called a dot product. We take the y coordinate of u2, say, and multiply it by fy, okay? We multiply the u1, multiply it by this fx. Well, if we just define a new vector here, a pairing, a packaging of the x direction slope and the y direction slope, well, then we can compactly represent this calculation as just a dot product. Okay, not an unreasonable thing to do. What we're gonna find though, is that this package not only is interesting for this shortcut or this compact representation of how to find the slope in the direction of u, this vector here is going to have meaning all by itself. And that is a bit of a surprise. So we are going to label a package that is a vector, which puts the x slope and then the y slope, or in 3D, the x slope, y slope, then z slope, we are gonna give that a name. We are gonna call that the gradient vector of f. And the idea there is if you give a point a, b, you get a vector back with this kind of calculation. This is denoted as gradient of f, grad f, or the, what's called the nabla symbol or a triangle symbol with the point down, a little arrow on it to indicate it's a vector, and then the f beside it. So this is another way that we might notate this as we go forward. Here that is written out, and this is probably the form that is most commonly used. The key thing is to note that there's a comma in the middle. We're not adding, we're not multiplying, we're taking a package, the x derivative at the point we're interested in, comma, the y derivative of the point we're interested in. With that definition, we can get the slope in a particular direction, and just a quick note here, the slope in a particular direction is a scalar value. How steep are how steep is the surface in the direction of u? Oh, well, that's a number. The gradient is something different. It's a vector built off the point we're at on the surface. As an example, let's just build the gradient vector once and see what it looks like. The gradient at the point x, y is going to be made up of the x derivative as a formula based on x and y and the y derivative at that same point well, how do we get that? We need the two partial derivatives. If we take the x partial derivative of this, we get e to the y. And if we take the y partial derivative, we are going to simply get x times, well, e to the y's derivative is e to the y again. So the gradient of this function in general is a package. It's e to the y comma x e to the y. Fair enough, there it is. I'm just gonna move this up a little bit so we can have some room for the later calculations. Then we can evaluate that at different points. Why not? Let's plug in the point one zero and just be careful with what is x and what is y. We're subbing in x equals zero, y, e sorry, x equals one, y equals zero. So we're subbing in e to the zero and one times e to the zero and that would be the vector one, one. Okay, let's reverse that. We'll have x equals zero, y equals one. Well, e to the one would be e, and zero times e to the one would be zero. So we'd have e zero. So these are just vectors. We're not quite sure what they mean yet, but we can calculate them as needed. Plug in the x equals two, again, going back to this formula. The y shows up first though, so it would be e to the negative three, and then x times e to the y, so two times e to the negative three. All right, and we can do this at any point we like. Anywhere in the domain where the partial derivatives are both defined, we can build this gradient vector. In some sense, we could draw this out. Let's take that back. It might also help just to remind ourselves that we have all these points and they're living just in two variables. This is all about the input. So we can take one of these points, say the point one zero, 
and ask, well, at that point, what did I get for the gradient vector? Well, I got this. All right, that's what it is. At the point zero, 01, we got a different value. So at the point zero, 01, we had all right and no up and down. So it looked like that. And it was fairly large. It was larger than this vector. And at the other point at two, negative three, down here somewhere, we got a vector that was to the right, but a little bit up. So like that. That was the grad of f in that direction. So if we wanted to, we could cover this whole plane with dots and the arrows that come out of them, with the arrows being computed by this gradient calculation. So far, so what? Let's investigate further in the subsequent videos.